So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I will address uh, the perforate diverticulitis, and in particular, I would uh, elucidate on the role of laparoscopic lavage and the Harpens procedure. Here are my disclosures. So, acute perforated diverticulitis is subdivided into hinge C3, the purulent peritonitis, and hinge C4, the fecal peritonitis. In uh, hinge C3, there are a number of surgical options. First of all, antibiotics and drainage, if necessary, then laparoscopic lavage, resectional surgery, and, and anastomosis, and the Hartmann's procedure. In fecal peritonitis, where there is still an open communication between the bowel and the peritoneal cavity, the Hartmann procedure is an option, resection and anastomosis is an option, and of course, there's always the debate where we can do laparoscopic surgery in the emergency setting. So what's the rationale of laparoscopic lavage? Well, the idea is that the hinc 3 the purulent perforated diverticulitis, originates from an abscess that has been perforated into the peritoneal cavity. So there is no existing communication anymore between the bowel and the peritoneal cavity. And that's why in a true HG3 purulent per perforated diverticulitis, lavage might work. So there have been several study groups that address this research question, resection or laparoscopic lavage for HG3 peritonitis, where we have the group from Norway in the Scandiv study, the group from uh, Sweden and Denmark, and they performed the Dilala study, and then the group from the Netherlands, including myself, the ladies trial. So these trials, they delivered the evidence showing that laparoscopic lavage was associated with more early reinterventions, but three out of the four of these patients never had a stoma. And at one year time, the incidence of uh, having a stoma was lower than in the group that had sectional surgery. And also laparoscopic lavage could serve as a bridge to elective resection if the uh, complaints persisted after the acute episode. So the resectional group showed less early interventions because of superior uh, sepsis control, but more late surgery, mainly due to stoma closure, and was associated with more costs. Here I show you the four years long-term results of the LOLA study, where we compared lavage versus sigmoidectomy. And as you can see, is that the reoperation rate on the long run in the lavage group was significantly lower than in the sigmoidectomy group, mainly because of the increased number of stomas that had to be closed. The ostomy-free percentage of these patients uh, was significantly better in the lavage group, almost 90% versus almost 80%, and the cumulative morbidity rate was similar in between the two groups. The laparoscopic lavage group was associated with a sigmoid survival of more than 50%. So more than half of these patients, they, had, they still had their sigmoid in situ on the long run. So laparoscopic lavage is still a valid option because it's associated with an overall similar morbidity, less costs, and it's sigmoid, sigmoid sparing, and it's, it's associated with less stomas. But we have to appreciate that there are failures, and most of these are reported to be uh, caused by a misdiagnosis, particularly perforated cancer, and the HC4 are responsible for the failures in the laparoscopic lavage. And these patients, they need resectional surgery. One of the advices is that if one is in doubt whether there's a true HC3, when one can perform an intraoperative endoscopy to rule out a perforated cancer or to show that there's still a communication uh, with the, uh, between the gut and the peritoneal cavity, uh, indicating that it's a hinge 4. So what about the Hartmann's 
procedure as opposed to the primary anastomosis. Well, here you see four of the randomized controls trials comparing primary anastomosis versus Hartman's procedure. And the accumulated evidence showed that uh, an anastomosis or sigmoidectomy with anastomosis with or without a temporary stoma was associated with a lower one-year stoma rate and that the Hartman procedure, the open Hartman procedure, had similar or even higher morbidity. But the reality is that in most of these trials, uh, select patients were included. So patients who were on steroids, had radiotherapy on their pelvis, or had cardi cardiovascular instability due to the sepsis, they were excluded. And also surgeons uh, were, uh, were selected. So mainly these patients were operated by the less experienced general surgeons, and these general surgeons did uh, most of the Hartmanns, and also they performed the Hartmanns in an open manner. So why is the open Hartman procedure such, such a bad operation? Well, it's associated with the high morbidity due to stoma problems, surgical site infection, and incisional hernias. And stomas are uh, less often closed as opposed to uh, sigmoidectomy with primary anastomosis because there is a great reluctancy between, uh, among the surgeons and the patients because most of these patients are old, have a lot of comorbidity, after open Hartman adhesions can be expected and many of these patients have coexisting ventral hernia that require, require repair and it really makes the operation a much bigger operation. Well, these uh, coming two slides show you the, uh, the benefit of the acute laparoscopic approach. And in the uh, registration trial alongside the ladies' trial, we showed that uh, if you look at the stoma closure rate of the patients who had a laparoscopic Hartman, that this stoma closure rate was similar to the patients uh, who had uh, sigmoidectomy with primary anastomosis and was superior to the patients who had open heart procedure. So more laparoscopic Hartmanns were reversed uh, as compared to open heart procedures. So maybe the Hartman procedure is not such a bad operation if it's done laparoscopically because all comers are eligible, including the uh, bad patients, the immunocompromised patients, radiotherapy and needs of inotropic uh, agents. It allows for an easy mobilization for a traction-free colostomy. The specimen can be extracted via the future stoma site, so there are no surgical site infections and no incisional hernias, and probably there will be a reduction of adhesions facilitating stoma closure. So, in conclusion, the evidence shows that true Hinchy uh, 3 perforated diverticulitis can be lavaged. Hinchy 4 uh, patients require resection and uh, anastomosis. Uh, the trial shows, showed that the Hartman procedure was obsolete. And the eminence is interpreting the evidence according to their uh, own wish. And the real life is that. There are a lot of excluded patients who were not included in the trials that probably uh, do best on a laparoscopic Hartman. I thank you for your attention.